Now let's focus on the former epicenter of Wuhan with our China correspondent Elizabeth Law, who's on the ground there. Hi Liz. Now Liz, when markets in China have come under increased sc uh, scrutiny recently after Wuhan's Huanan seafood wholesale market turned out to be a focal point for early viral infections. There's also pressure from the US to call for the complete shutdown of these wet markets. How would this affect China's food security sector? Well, hi, Jan. Hi, Olivia. Firstly, um, a bit on the background. So I'm standing here by the bank of the Yangtze River, the one of two main rivers that runs through Wuhan. Uh, and as you can see, people are people are out and about already. There are people behind me in this in this park. So uh, life is gradually starting to get back to normal. Now, uh, to answer your question about the Huanan, uh, beg your pardon, about uh, wholesale markets and wet markets in in China. These markets are necessary because uh, most of them ensure food security for major cities. Uh, food produce from all over the all over China and all over the world, in fact, come to these wholesale centers, which are then which then uh, supply the shops, uh, be it supermarkets or small neighborhood shops in cities across China. So it's very important, especially for urban folk, to have that there are these sort of wholesale centers about. I have spoke to academics who estimate that about 80% of Chinese people buy their produce that originate at these wholesale centers. The other 20%, they buy them directly uh, from the producers on platforms like Taobao and JD.com. Right, Liz, um, you've just described a little bit about, you know, the, the people milling about in the in the area that you're at. But it's been about a week since Wuhan reopened its major transport links after the two month lockdown. So what's the traffic and transport network situation like in the city? And has the movement of people within and out of the city picked up in the past week? Mm. So gradually, uh, traffic in the in the early days after the lockdown was lifted, traffic really was still quite sparse in the roads. There's a lot of space. Uh, very, very few cars were out were out and about. Of course, it's more than during the lockdown, which is completely no cars at all, except for ambulances and uh, essential vehicles that were delivering medical supplies or groceries to people. Um, but as the days have gone by, we have seen more and more flights uh, getting added, even though some of them have been cancelled because of a lack of demand. But they are trying to bump up the number of flights. Uh, going out of the city, there are more trains that are leaving Wuhan as well. But the only problem is that when it comes to places like, especially Beijing, which is the capital city, which has very tight control measures, only 1,000 passengers, uh, commuters, uh, beg your pardon, are allowed to leave on trains to Wuhan. And you, and you get your ticket for those trains through a ballot. Mm -hmm. Well, Liz, uh, we were speaking behind the scenes uh, earlier and uh, we understand that you had to undergo the COVID-19 uh, swab test earlier. What was the experience like? So uh, as part of the requirements for me to go back to Beijing, I have to do two COVID tests, um, one here before I leave Wuhan and one in Beijing uh, before I'm allowed to re-enter my estate. So the one here, uh, they there, there, were, there were two ways that, that, I, that I could do it. Uh, First, so the one that I did was I had uh, I had a throat swab taken. Basically, you just lean really far back uh, and and say ah, as though you're going to the dentist. But um, they put they put a, a swab all the way down your throat, and it feels like someone is pushing something down your throat and mm. pressing around it and and sort of like prodding mm. at it. It makes it makes you want to cough and vomit at the same right. time. Just when you feel you're about you're about to throw up, it, <laughs> it's over. But what that what that leads to is a mass like a massive coughing fit when you're done, which obviously horrifies all the other people who are in the hospital. Mm. Um, then I was told that there's another method, a much easier method, which I all I had to do was to spit into a cup. But um, yeah, I found I found that out quite late. <laughs> Well, thank you so much and stay safe. And of course, uh, bringing us around Wuhan as well. That was our China correspondent, Elizabeth Law, joining us live from Wuhan.